Welcome back to Wiki Science YouTube channel. In this video, we will be talking about the neuroanatomy of the brain and the brain stem. The aspect of the neurobiotaxis. We also have what we to as nerve fibers, including all the what white matters that form the nerve fibers. We have what we to as tracts. We have what we to as association fiber. We have what we to as commissures. And what differentiates commissure from what decussition? And that's why we we'll talk about projection fibers. These are one. Of, these are major component of white matter, and we we'll focus basically on the ascending and descending tracts. Okay, let's get started. Now, in the um, overview of the neuroanatomy of the brain and the brain stem, that is where you have the cerebrum and you have the diencephalon. On part of the diencephalon, there is the thalamus. Okay, in between the thalamus, that's where you have the third ventricle. Okay, now we talk about the brain stem. In the brain stem, we have the midbrain, we have the pons, and we also have the medulla oblongata. Now, to come about what we mean by neurobiotaxis, neuro is from the word nerve, or we just say nerve cell. So, remember, and here, when you say bio, bio means life, and taxis, what does taxis mean? Taxis means arrangement. Arrangement. Okay? So therefore, we say neurobiotaxis is the arrangement of the nerve fibers and your what cell bodies doing life. Now, the set of rules or the laws that encompass neurobiotaxis, we have about three major laws. Now, the first one states that a nerve cell will actually migrate towards region of high density of stimuli. Where does this occur? This occur in the level of the pons. Where you have where you have the facial nerve. And this facial nerve it actually migrates towards the region of high density. What is the region of high density? That is the trigeminal nucleus. Another law of neurobiotaxis is that the nerve fibers that transmit stimuli of similar type, they travel along the same path. And this is what is responsible for what we refer to as the corticospinal tract. When you hear the word corticospinal tract, you've heard the word corticonuclei tract. Nuclear tract. Where do you have them? Okay, you basically have them in your what? Cruz cerebri. The cruz cerebri, where you have in front of the midbrain, you have what we to as the corticospinal tract moving along the what? Cruz cerebri. Because the stimuli which these nerve fibers be transmit. They are similar. So they actually converge along the level of what? The cool cerebral. Now, the third law of neurobiotaxis is that a nerve cell, it has tendency of centralization and decentralization. When you say centralization, it means that there are some particular um, there are some particular stimuli that are governed or controlled by lower levels in the central in the um, central nervous system but when it comes to the period of evolution that which you now have an evolutionary adaptation towards this particular word stimuli the same kind of stimuli found in lower animals that are controlled by lower levels in the central nervous system in higher animals are now taken over by what the higher um, levels in the central nervous system so instead of being controlled by the lower levels, they are controlled by what? The higher levels. So this is one of, um, this is the third law that actually make up what we to as what? The neurobiotaxis. Now let's move to the aspect of white matter. When you say white matter, what forms the white matter? White matter is actually formed by what we refer to as the many sheet that covers the heart zones, which is formed by glia cells. We have them in the peripheral nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, the glia cells in the peripheral nervous system, nervous system is 
is called the swan cell. It's called the swan cell. But the glial cell that you have in the central nervous system, if it's now come to the aspect of central nervous system, it is called oligodendrite. It's called oligodendrite. So now, what are the components of this white matter? That's the question. What are the components of the white matter? Don't forget, white matter are made up of what? They are made up of axons that are melanated. Axons that are melanated that will refer to as what? White matter. And we say what forms the myelin sheet? They are basically what? Glial cells. What are the glial cells in central nervous system? It is what? Oligodendrite. In the peripheral nervous system, it is Schwann cell. Now, let's talk about the what? Component of white matter. The component of white matter include what referred to as a tract. What do we mean by tract? Tract is a group of nerve fiber that have common origin, common cause, and they have common termination. That they begin at the same level, they ascend towards the same, or descend towards the same what? The same level or region, and they also terminate almost at the same what? Similar region. So we call this word tract. Now fibers that are sent upward here, what are they called? We call them tracts because they are coming from the lower level to what? To upper level. We call them tracts. When it comes to aspect of association fibers, what are association fibers? Association fibers are basically uh, white matter. They are also white matter. But this type of white matter, they actually connect or they allow some particular region to communicate together. Like for example now, you can have the aspect of the brain, you can have the aspect of the brain. And when you have the aspect of the brain, one thing you observe is that we have referred to as the frontal lobe, we have referred to as what the pivotal lobe, we have referred to as what occipital lobe. Now the frontal lobe can communicate, can communicate with the occipital lobe. Also, you can have a kind of uh, sulcus here, which you refer to as what central sulcus. Which you allow what? Which you allow the what? The pre central gyrus to communicate with what? Post central gyrus. And also for the post central gyrus to communicate with the what? Pre central gyrus. It is along the same particular what? Hemisphere. Now, don't forget, when you talk about hemispheres, okay? This is one hemisphere. Let's write right cerebral hemisphere. And this is your left cerebral hemisphere. For this particular region of the cerebral hemisphere, to communicate to this region of the cerebral hemisphere, they need a connection. What connects these two regions together is called association fiber. So if I also have the same thing here, what connects these two regions together is also called what? Association fiber. This differentiates association fibers from what we to as the commissures. What are commissures? Commissures are actually white matter that actually connect two different sides, not on the same side now. Just like this one is on the same side. When it's on the same side, we call it what? FC lateral. They cause FC lateral connection. But on opposite side, right communicating with the left, we call it what? Contralateral. Contralateral. A contralateral connection between two different regions is called a commission. Get this. Connection, that is, they are communicating together. What connects the right cerebral hemisphere with the left cerebral hemisphere? This is called what? Corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. So it means that the corpus callosum in the in between the two cerebral hemispheres is a collection of white matters. Is a collection of white matter. We call this what? We call this um commission. We also have some other type of commission, like the one you have behind the two thalamus. We call this what? A benular commission. You can also have referred to as what? The anterior commission. You can have referred to as the posterior commission. These are different types of what? Commission that you can have. But it comes to an extent that which students begin to wonder the difference between commission and what? And deposition. Now, commission allows communication between two contralateral parts. But deposition is just a cross 
between two different parts. It does not allow communication. To be precise, this is what we mean by commission. This is what we mean by commission. Now, if I have this region, if I have this region now, I'll just take a cross section here now. If I have this region now, there are some fibers in this region. There are some fibers in this region of the uh, of the spinal cord. There are some fibers in this region, definitely in the region of spinal cord. Do you know what they do? Once they enter through the post through the posterior roots, now when they enter into the what posterior on now, they actually cross to the other side. When they cross to the other side like this, they are crossing to the other side in order to ascend upward. This kind of what? This kind of crossing ordinarily is called a deposition. Also, if I have another um, particular what? Sensory fiber that is coming through the posterior root. Now, by the time it gets to the what? Posterior horn, what happens? It actually crosses to the other side. This crossing to the other side before it ascends upward is also called what? Deposition. This differentiates deposition from what? Commission. Because commission allows communication. So there is transmission of what? There is transmission of impulse between these two. But in the case of deposition, there is no transmission of what? There is no exchange of impulse. There is no exchange of impulse. Okay, let's now talk about projection fibers. What are projection fibers? Projection fibers are basically fibers that spread out from a particular region or converge to a particular region in order to allow communication. They converge or they spread out. Where do we have this? Very good. I know you, you must have come across something like Corona radiata. What is Corona radiata? Now let's quickly see. This is thalamus. This is another thalamus. In between these two thalamus, what do you have? That is the third ventricle. That's where we have the third ventricle. Okay. However, on this side of the thalamus, on this side of the thalamus, on these two sides of the thalamus, what do you have? We have some particular uh, particular structure in this region. What do you call them? We call them striatum. We call them what? Striatum. What do we mean by striatum? There are two particular st different structural units that make up the striatum. We have referred to as the globus pallidus, globus pallidus, and you also have referred to as putame, putame. In between these two regions, you now have special units for collection of a special unit for the collection of for the collection of white matter. Now let's see. What do we have here? So now let's see. In between the thalamus and the striatum, you now have a to as what? Internal capsule. You have a to as what? Internal capsule. So this internal capsule, it has two particular what? Corresponding units. The region that descends down and is having the region that spreads upward. The region that descends down and the region that spreads upward. Now, when they spread upward, where are they spreading towards? They are spreading towards cerebral hemispheres. So what you just draw here is the cerebral hemisphere. So it means that there is a structure on this side and there is a structure on this side. What do you call the structure on this side? Striatum. What do you call the structure on this side? Striatum. What make up the striatum? Globus pallidus and what? Putamen. Now, by the time this particular word, in between this particular structure where you have the word internal capsule, the internal capsule now spread out like this towards different region of the world. They spread towards different region of the, the cerebral hemisphere. Now see, what do you call this? We call it corona radiata. So this structure is for the corona radiata because it is spreading out. But when it converges inside, it converges inside as what? What's the structure? 
cruz cerebral. Cruz cerebral. So it is basically made up of what? Converging fibers and diverging fibers. The converging fibers are corticospinal tracts or corticospinal fibers. So it is made up of descending what? Fibers. These fibers that are descending, they are called what? Corticospinal fibers. These fibers are called corticospinal fibers. But the fibers that are radiating out here, what do you call them? Corona radiata. Corona radiata. Corona radiata. So that is about the projective fibers. That is about projective fibers. Let's now talk about the ascending and the descending tract. Ascending tracts are basically sensory tracts. They are basically sensory tracts. They are basically sensory tracts. What do we mean by they are basically sensory tracts? It means that what they transmit is only made up of what? Sensory stimuli. Sensory stimuli. And don't forget we have so many or several types of sensory stimuli like pain, like touch, like heat, like cold, like vibration. So many, so many. So, um, or itching. So many kind of responses like that are carried out of sensory words, stimuli. So now let's see where you have on this side, on this side of this particular um, cross section of the spinal cord. This is a cross section of the spinal cord. We want to show this kind of ascending and descending fiber. Before we expand more on them, we want to actually see the regions where these particular words, ascending and descending fibers are located. Now let's see. Um, taking a cross section of the spinal cord now. On this side, we were talking about the ascending fibers. And on this side, the um, particular regions that are shaded will be describing what we to as the word, the descending fibers. However, let's get to know that this particular line you see here is a what? That is a posterior sulcus in the spinal cord. We are taking a cross section of the spinal cord. The one you see here is the anterior median feature. And this is your posterior median sulcus. Why these ones that are here, they represent the what? The lat of, um, that is the posterior lateral sulcus. So this posterior lateral sulcus, this is another posterior lateral sulcus. So, uh, the one you have here, where you have this green um, structure, represents your what? Your green matter. Where you have your posterior on, you have what? Anterior on, the posterior on, another anterior on. But you see that they communicate together. This communication is called what? The green matter commission. The grey matter commission that you have is what you see here. And um, all you see at the middle, you have a central canal. So this is our central canal. So now let's get started with the words, with the identification of the structure. Why is this so important? It's important so that we can be able to know how this particular tract ascend up or they descend down with respect to other tracts. So now let's take a look after you The first structure that we have is on this side. Uh, that is what this one you have here. This hypothalamic tract. So this is the hypothalamic tract. You can see it's shaded on this side. So this is hypothalamic tract. Yeah. Now for this one, you can see that it's on this side it is shaded. What do you call it? We call this cortical spinal tract. Cortical spinal tract. Okay, you also have a kind of baby-like structure close to it. And now um, it's also shaded on this side. We call it what? The rubrospinal tract. The rubrospinal tract. Now, let's see. The hypothalamic tract shows that the ascension is from, is from what? It's from the word hypothalamus. Here, cortical spinal tract is basically from the word, from the cerebral cortex. When you're talking about what? Rubrospinal tract. From the red nucleus. Red nucleus. Now, let's see what you also have here. So, here you have a bit as the lateral, lateral, uh, that is reticulo spinal tract. Lateral reticulo spinal tract. So, um, looking at this structure that you have here, you can see it's not shaded here. So, we take the other part where it's not shaded. Um, here now, what do you have? We call this the posterior, posterior uh, spinal cerebellar tract. Spinal cerebellar tract. If this is called posterior spinal cerebellar tract and it's behind, then it means that for posterior we always have what? Anterior. So the one directly in front is called what? The anterior spinal cerebellar tract. 
and two also on the side bell attract. Okay, you also have one on this side. This one that you have on this side, you can see it's not also shaded on this other side. What do you call it? This is called the what? Lateral, the lateral spinal thalamic tract. Spinal thalamic tract. Lateral spinal thalamic tract. So that's what you have here. You have to be the lateral spinal thalamic tract. This is your anterior. Okay. What about the structure you have here? This structure you have here is simply called what? It's called the anterior spinal thalamic tract. Anterior spinal thalamic tract. So when you are being asked to mention the ascending tract and descending tract, on the ascending tract, we see posterior spinal cerebellar, anterior spinal cerebellar, lateral spinal thalamic, anterior spinal thalamic. Okay, we have here vestibulo, spinal tract, vestibulo spinal tract. So now, we have this to be the vestibule spinal tract. Yeah, here, yeah. what about this part? This part, we call this what? Spinal, spinal olivary tract. Spinal olivary tract. Spinal olivary tract. If this is the spinal olivary tract, you can see that there is another structure in front of it, basically in front of it, and it's shaded on this other tract. We call this one spinal olivary. Then this one is called what? Olivospinal. Olivospinal tract. Olivospinal tract. Olivospinal tract. Uh, oh, the spinal tract. Okay, you can also see this particular part here. We call this what? Septo marginal tract. Septo marginal tract. Septo marginal tract. And what do you call this one that you basically see here? What do you call this particular structure that you see here? The coma tract. We call this coma tract. That's the coma tract of shooters. Uh, coma tract of shooters. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see the remaining parts that which you haven't. Um, okay, what do you call this? You can see it's actually labeled here. It's actually shaded here, so it goes to the side. If it does go to the side, what do you have? We call it what? That is this um, tectospinal tract. Tectospinal tract. Tectospinal tract. Tectospinal tract. Tectospinal tract. Okay, okay. Is there another structure we have now that label here? Okay, we also have another one here. What do you call this? We call this the what? The medial, medial reticulo, reticulospinal, reticulospinal tract. Medial reticulospinal tract is what you have there. Okay, looking at this carefully now with we've actually identified as many as possible structures that we have in the region of the world, the spinal cord. So we've identified them. It's not for us now to focus on what we to as well now, the ascending tracts. Now we take the first one that's the um, posterior spinal cerebellar, we talk about the anterior spinal cerebellar, we talk about the lateral spinal thalamic tract, we talk about the spinal um, olivary tract, and we also talk about what the anterior spinal Thalamic tract. In this region, we also have another ascending tract. Um, ascending tract here. Yeah, we have another ascending tract here. We have another ascending tract here. The ascending tract here we have here is called fasciculus gracilus. Fasciculus gracilus. Fasciculus gracilus. Or you call it fasciculus gracilus. Really, actually, I want it to be. And the other one you have is called fasciculus cuneatus. Fasciculus cuneatus. Cuneatus. Fasciculus gracilus and fasciculus cuneatus. So these are the two basic structures that I have in the posterior. Uh, that is the posterior um, funiculus. This is called the posterior funiculus. Don't forget in our previous video on the what? On the cross section of the spinal cord, we've been made clear that we have the posterior funiculus, we have the lateral funiculus, we have the what? anterior funiculus. The funiculus are regions where you have the white matter in the ascending and descending tract. Okay, so this um, fasciculus gracilus and the fasciculus funiatus, they both make up a particular structure. They both combine to form dosaculum system. These two now, that is the fasciculus 
fasciculus gracilus and the fasciculus cuneatus. Fasciculus cuneatus. Cuneatus. The fungal referred to as these two fungal referred to as the dorsal column system. The dorsal column system. The both fungal referred to as the dorsal column system. 